Morning, everyone. And welcome to everyone who's joining us online. Uh, are there any visitors here today that would like to announce themselves? Say hello. Okay. <laughs> All right. A few a few announcements before we get started with our with our worship. Um, please visit the table in Bailey Hall for news and signups uh, after the service uh, during our coffee hour. Um, we're still accepting food for the food shelf, and senior meals are at noon on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And you can call Jan to let them know. Um, yesterday we had our first aid class here at the church, and it was it was really a good class. We learned about CPR, we learned how to use the AED uh, machine, and we learned some other basic first aid. So it was it was a very good class. Thank you to everyone who attends. So now we have we have more people who know what to do if, if things go a little haywire. <coughs> Um, and a thank you to Katie, who was uh, the, the woman from the Northshire Rescue Squad who came and, and taught the class. She was a very dynamic teacher and answered all our questions, and it was a lot of fun. So it was a morning well spent. Um, some sad news this morning, our friend of ours, Kevin Bishop, um, the organist at the Rupert Methodist Church and the Rupert Congregational Church has passed away this weekend. Um, and so we'll be keeping his wife, Linda, and uh, their seven children in our prayers today. Um, another announcement is that we have the memorial service for Sue Snow this Wednesday at 2 p.m. And so if you can help out Sandy and, and help in any way to bring in some, some small food items and just to help out in the kitchen for the reception, which will be immediately following the memorial service at 2. That's on Wednesday. And... Um, we are welcoming some new members today. So we're excited about that. That'll be part of our service in a little while. Um, and it's a joy to be having new members join us. So, um, Are there any other announcements? Okay, let's begin with our intro. It's just printed in your bulletin. Uh, we can remain seated. It's the refrain from Alleluia, Alleluia. Join me in our call to worship from Psalm 28. It's printed in your bulletins. Blessed be the Lord, for the Lord has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield, and the Lord my heart So I am helped, and my heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to God. O oh, save thy people and bless thy heritage. Be thou their shepherd and carry them forever. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this gathering time, this time where we join together in body and mind and spirit to praise you, to worship you, and to seek your face. Open our minds, open our hearts, that we may receive your word and carry it with us as we go out in joy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's join together in singing our opening hymn, number 308, Thine Be the Glory.
first scripture reading is from the book of Acts. And to set the stage for this, in, um, Peter has just healed a lame man. The man was lame from birth, and everybody knows that he healed this man, and now he's being, he's being interrogated in front of the high priests and the elders. On the morrow, their rulers and elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem with Anas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set Peter in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a cripple, by what means this man has been healed, be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, but which has become the head of the corner, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. It's the word of God. And now I'd like to invite the new, uh, new members to come forward and we can welcome you. Um, let's maybe by the lectern and we for, for reading. Welcome. welcome, hi. So this is an exciting day for us, for all of us. Thank you for joining us here as new members. Um, so I'll, we're going to read from, from a, a welcoming liturgy and there'll be some responses for us to make as a congregation and some as, as, as a new members. Today we make a covenant with one another. Dennis, Marilyn, Sheila, Ed, Nikki. You make promises to us before God so that we know that we can count on you. And we make promises to you before God so that you know that you can depend on us through good times and hard times. You have a church and a people. And now we ask you, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I do. Do you promise to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to be a witness to the healing ministry and the loving message of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. Do you promise according to the grace given you to grow in your faith, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's work in the world? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? If so, please say, I promise, with the help of God. Will the members of the Federated Church of East Arlington please rise? Do you promise to help Dennis, Marilyn, Edward, Nicole, and Sheila find their place in the body of Christ to pray with and for them, to welcome them fully in holy friendship, to be angels for them in times of distress and servants to them in times of need. If so, please answer. We promise with the help of God. We promise with the help of God. Let us, the members of the Federated Church of East Arlington, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. Please read your part and read it for us. We welcome, we welcome you, you with a joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together 
in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of a Christ who is alive and well and at work in the world. You've all brought your light to us. We don't leave you empty-handed. We have shawls for you to offer as a symbol of belonging and a certificate of membership. You're encouraged to keep this small shawl with you through good times and hard times and lots of everyday times. And whenever you hold it, may you know that you have brothers and sisters praying for you as you are also invited to pray for us. So do we have some shawls? And we have, sorry, I spelled your name wrong. With that. My daughter helped me do it. And we, <laughs> here's a certificate. So far. Welcome. Thank you. These are prayer shawls knitted by members of the congregation. And, uh, <laughs> Did you have one for Marilyn? One for she? Okay, okay, we're getting this, we're getting this sorted out here. This is, uh, I think do you need to be draped as well? Sure. I think I think for you. So these are knitted by members of the congregation and, and, uh, and would love for you. Let's join together in a blessing. Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to be your servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for sending us Dennis and Marilyn, Ed, Nikki, and Sheila, that we may work together in serving the needs of others. Confirm us in the power of your covenant, Lord, that we may live in your spirit, share regularly in worship, and so love each other that we may have among us the same mind, which was in Jesus Christ, to whom be all honor and glory. Amen. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Lonnie. So are there any children here who would like to come forward? Hi, Jenny. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. 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 Welcome, guys. Well, you know what? I, I, gotta, I really wanted to bring in a special surprise. Didn't work out today. I was going to bring a lamb in here. but. Didn't work out, so maybe another day. Would you like to see a little lamb one of these days? I'll do what I can. A lamb, a lamb. baby lamb. Because today is Good Shepherd Sunday. I want to say lamb. No, not a lamp. But we could, I could bring, a lamp, a lamp would be good too. Not as exciting as a lamb. A lamp? A lamb with a lamb inside. A lamb lamp, that would be good, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll work on that one. So today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and, and what it is, Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. And so we have an image of, of Jesus being like a shepherd. And in the Old Testament, we have an image of God being like a shepherd. Now, do you, do you know the 23rd Psalm? Have you heard that? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, so, so, you, so um, that is like we're the sheep. Yeah, exactly. We're like the sheep, and the Lord is like the shepherd. And Jesus is like the shepherd. We're like the sheep. And what and Jesus gives us different qualities of what a shepherd would be like. And the most important one, you know, we, we, we think of delicate little lambs, but in back in the old days there would be wild beasts out in the wilderness. There'd be bears and lions. They would like nothing better than to eat a little lamb. So so a shepherd had to be really tough. They had to go and they had to defend the sheep. King David had a slingshot and he would shoot stones at the bears and lions, but they had to be very, very brave. And so in quality of Jesus and the quality of a good shepherd is bravery. And we talk about that today. We'll talk about the shepherd laying down their life for the sheep, being so brave 
that they would that they there's a song about that too but there, you'll have to find it yourself would you bring your lamb stuffy next week What's the song be, yeah. psalm 23 okay. and now so what i want you to do it when we think about jesus we can think about a shepherd we think about a good shepherd who is so brave that they lay down their life for us can we think of anybody in our lives like that your parents maybe <laughs> see the thing is we're called to be like jesus so we're also called to be shepherds too we're called to look out for each other look out for our brothers and sisters too sometimes right we got to look out for each other and protect each other and be kind right that is part of what being a good shepherd is so not only is jesus a shepherd and we're like the lambs but we're like shepherds for each other and that's a wonderful thing we can look out for each other and protect each other so let's say a prayer together okay it can it be amen today it should be which one amen okay dear lord we thank you for this time together we thank you for your example as a good shepherd. We ask that we follow you, that we can be shepherds ourselves, and we can also be brave enough to be looking out for others always. Amen. All right, have a great time in Sunday school. And you find, look for that in the Bible, Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. Psalm. Psalm. In the Bible. In the Bible. Yeah. Your mom will show you. Yep. Yeah. Now, as we enter into our time of prayer, are there any joys or concerns we'd like to lift up as a congregation? Yeah, Patty. I have a joy. Yeah. My son Jonathan is here in Bentley School. He's been praying for him since January. He's got it all back. That's a wonderful oh, joy. Thank awesome. you for sharing that. Prayers are good. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yes, Dennis. Prayers are feeling for Yeah. We'll keep. Leotis in our prayers. Yeah, Diane. Um, prayers of healing for uh, Tom Moore, who's in um, ICU. For Tom Moore. Keep him in prayers. Prayers of healing for my niece, Michelle. Michelle. Yes. Sue. Prayers for healing for Jen, who has recent surgery on her knee. Prayers for Jim. And prayers for him and for Scott's cousin Trevor, who's in Dartmouth. Prayers for Trevor. Yeah. Yes. Grateful prayers for all the prayers that have been answered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Prayers for my brother. Yeah. He'll be in our prayers. Walter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know. A, a real joy. Okay. As we enter into our prayers, let's take a moment to be silent, to recognize where we are here in this place, but also where we are in our lives, to give thanks that we have a moment to praise. A moment of pause and stillness to remember that these moments of stillness, these moments of gathering are essential parts of our journey in the life of the spirit. Essential that we gather, that we give thanks together, that we take moments to be quiet. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the grace that you've offered to us, Jesus Christ. You told us that where two or three are gathered in your name, 
You were there in our midst. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the springtime, the reminders of renewed life and rebirth, which is in every part of nature, so that we may observe and feel your message of hope and renewal and resurrection. Lord, we come before you in days that often feel troubled. We are burdened with many things to do and many things, many cares in this world. We come here today hoping to lay our cares and burdens before you to give thanks and to know that we do not carry these burdens alone. We thank you for being with us, even through the dark valleys. Even when we do not feel your presence, you are there with us. And we give you thanks for this. We ask prayers today for those who need healing. We ask for prayers for those in hospitals, those in prisons, those who are isolated and alone, those who suffer from confusion. We ask you to watch over Chet, help to heal him. Be with Ginny. Watch over and continue to heal Rick Davis. We ask you to be with Linda Bishop and the family of Kevin. And give them comfort during this difficult time. We ask you to be with the family of Sue Snow and comfort them. We ask you to be with the daughters of Dick, help to heal them from cancer. We ask your healing spirit to be with Walter Henry Moses, bless him. We ask your healing for Philip Marshall. We ask your healing for Mary. We ask your healing for Emma Earl and Harold Earl. We ask your healing for Cleotis. We ask your healing for Tom Moore. We ask your healing for Michelle. We ask your healing for Jen as she goes into surgery. We ask your healing for Trevor. Please be with them with your healing light, Lord. May our prayers go out and be heard. We also give you thanks, Lord, for the joys in life. We give you thanks for Jonathan's restored hearing. We give you thanks for our answered prayers. We give you thanks for the new members that have joined us today. We ask you to strengthen us all in fellowship in the name of Christ, who taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we continue our time of prayer with our offerings. Let us give generously as God has so generously given to us.
as that you accept our gifts, that they may go out and do good in the world. Amen. Our scripture today is from 1 John 3, verses 16 through 24. And we're just, we're continuing on with John's letter uh, to the Gentile congregations. <clears throat> this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or a sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. For our, for our hearts condemn us. We know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he loves us. We know it by the spirit that he gave us. Amen. The Psalter today is in your bulletin, and it is Psalm 25, and please join me. 23. Yes. Before we start reading it, I just, if I could say a word, um, this is such a wonderful psalm, it's, and since it's printed in your bulletin, you have it, I would encourage you to take it with you keep it during the week and, and look back over it because as we read it, we, we go through it more quickly, but there's some credible action words in this Psalm. It says, the Lord frees us from wants, the Lord leads us, restores us, removes our fears, comforts, prepares the table, anoints. There's all these wonderful action words in this Psalm. And, and sometimes when we read it, we go through it so quickly, but I encourage you to keep it with you during the week and, and look back over it um, and, and to sort of let these words sink into you because these are qualities of God and that we, in, in the, our different readings today, we're talking about the name of God. What does this name mean? What, what is, and, and here are qualities. And so to dwell on it as we go through the week, but I just wanted to make that one little note. Okay. And that's how we love God, in action. That's right. Action. Okay, Psalm 23, please join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The gospel today is from John 10 and verses 11 through 18. And this 
um, chapter, chapter 10 and chapter 9, Jesus has just cured the blind man who has been blind since birth. And again, the Pharisees are asking questions. There's people asking questions. There's some unrest. And this is what Jesus says. These are the words of Jesus. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is the hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not in the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it back up. This command I received from my father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's join now together in singing hymn 138, The King of Love is My Shepherd. Um, we'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. Verses 4 and 5 are uh, getting a rough, rough deal today. Just one note before I get into the sermon. Um, we have a church council meeting today after the service. I should have announced that earlier. And um, that's what time are we start? 11.15 or so? 
and we'll be meeting here in the sanctuary. So if anyone would like to sit in on the meeting or would like to bring up anything to the attention of the church council, you're more than welcome. It's open to all members and anyone who would like to participate and see what's going on. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Um, and I wanna talk a bit about the, the name of Jesus and about the meaning of the Good Shepherd. Um, our readings from Acts and from the letter of John this morning, they both refer to the name of Jesus. When Peter stands up in front of this council in, um, in Jerusalem after healing a lame man, he said, I, I healed this man by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, he said, and whom God raised from the dead. Peter says, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The letter from uh, John echoes the same kind of theme. John writes, we should believe in the name of God's son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he commands us. And I, I think about that. What does this mean? How can a name have power? Why is their name, why, why is a name powerful at all? Um, Peter healed the lame man in Jesus' name. I, I revert back to sort of the modern scientific thinking. How does that work? How can we dissect that? You know, I don't think we're really meant to dissect it, but I, I do think that we're, we're meant to understand this name. Understanding what this name is, is, is really the foundation of our, of our faith. Um, the full name Jesus Christ of Nazareth says a lot. Anyway, just in, on the surface, it said a lot. The name Jesus was very common at, the, at that time, 2000 years ago. Um, it's the Greek version of the name Yeshua or Joshua. Um, so being very common, saying Jesus of Nazareth would identify this particular Jesus as we would say, you know, the son of somebody or, or somebody who's the Miller's son. He kind of gives a, a more particular sense of who this Jesus was, which Jesus we're talking about. Um, the name Joshua or Jesus was very significant in Jesus' time also because Joshua was the leader of um, the Jewish tribes that in the book of Exodus took, Moses didn't make it to the promised land. Joshua was the one who finally led the people over into the promised land. So he was the first leader after Moses. So there's a, it's a very significant name, this name Joshua. The translation of the name Joshua means God's salvation. So in the, in the word itself, there's a lot going on. There's a lineage from Joshua. There's the meaning of God's salvation. And there, and then Christ is the Greek version of the Hebrew word Messiah, which means anointed one, anointed or chosen. So when you have a name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you put it all together, there's a lot in this one name. Just as you have some, some people who might have four or five different names named after parents or grandparents and the last name, there's a lineage to this name. Jesus Christ of Nazareth identifies a man from Nazareth who is God's chosen savior. And we all have experience in the power of names in one way or the other. Um, if you've ever been called a bad name, you realize that uh, there's power in that, call it misnaming somebody, calling them something nasty, being or using it to call somebody else a bad name. That's, that's a way that names do work, right? That, that, that does something. Um, I had another experience uh, with, with a name when I was a Teamster. I, I was driving trucks on commercials for, for a number of years. And so in Hollywood is a little bit like mafia. It's, it's in the sense that it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And, and uh, I got in kind of in, in an odd way. I didn't have family or friends in the Teamsters. I, I just, uh, I got in on my own and I was in doing commercials and commercials even is its own world. It's kind of like the wild west. You're shooting commercials and you're, you're on these different crews and you do all kinds of stuff. It's a very unstable kind of life, long hours and a little crazy. And I, at some point, I, I really wanted to transition out of that. Um, it wasn't a good, it's not a good family life type of job, at least not for me. So um, I had a good fortune. I, I, I got hired on a movie and I, I worked on this one movie for a while. And um, I, the guy I worked for, his name was Kenny. 
and he was highly respected in the business. He was a guy who was no nonsense. He had a lot of integrity, very high standard for his drivers, and just just really tough. And I kind of roundabout, I got I got to work on a crew of his, and um, I worked for the pretty much the entire movie. And after that, I never worked for Kenny again. Um, he was uh, he retired soon after that, and I only saw him a couple times while I was on the job, so not a lot of contact. But the interesting thing was for years after that. If I would, people say, oh, your introduction in the business is, oh, who have you worked for? Who have you done that? Who have you worked for? And if I mentioned that I'd worked for Kenny, um, it seemed like doors were open for me in a way that, that I was like, wow. You know, it was sort of, he, because of his integrity, because of his good work ethic and everything else, he was known. And because I'd worked for him and, you know, that made people pay attention. So it was, it was a very tangible sense of doors being opened up. Um, it's kind of common in Hollywood, uh, famous people in Hollywood, it, there's who you know is kind of a currency. But we also know that happens in politics too, right? We know like you, people go to pay a lot of money to go to fundraisers and business people just to be seen next to the politicians. And if you have somebody's ear, if you know somebody, you're, you get a lot of clout. Um, so name association is, is sort of a, uh, we know how that works in the world nowadays. Um, this year, Particularly, uh, since it's an election year, we know we're going to be bombarded with all kinds of um, lawn signs and bumper stickers and stuff's going to be on our screens. And um, there's going to be a lot of names going around of different politicians. Um, now, I don't imagine that many people would admit that they look uh, to these names for salvation, not in the spiritual sense. Um, but they might be looking for salvation some other ways. And you might not look to a candidate for spiritual salvation, but with the current level of partisanship, I think a lot of people hope that one candidate will save them from the other. So there is kind of a sense of salvation, not, not the spiritual kind, but save me from the other guy. Um, so we, we do have these, these names, you know, that are emblazoned everywhere. And um, again, having worked in Hollywood, I, I don't think we, we, we think of the, the type of language that Hollywood uses a lot of times, but salvation is kind of embedded in a lot of the advertising that we see and all the brand names, you know, a brand name is stuff that we recognize. There's a name. We all have, we all know these names since we were kids. Um, but through the language of advertising, salvation kind of comes through that a lot. Um, a brand name soap will save us from dirt, right? We find a brand name appliance that's going to save us time. A brand name mattress will save us from a poor night's sleep. Um, I once saw an advertisement for a phone and, and I, I couldn't believe it. Said, Here's a phone that will save you from your phones. I didn't say said that, like, what? Um, and we, you know, all the, the brands of drugs that are out there, all these drugs that'll save us, you know, sometimes they'll save us from brand new medical conditions, which never really existed until um, the last few years, you know? So, and that's not to mention all the things that the, all the brands that will offer us financial savings. So these savings are of all kinds are, are kind of laced through our culture. Um, whatever the names, whatever the promises, we're being offered salvation at every turn mostly material salvation, right? Um, and I could go on about the names because it's a subject that fascinates me, if you haven't noticed. Um, but I want to talk about the name of Jesus, and I want to talk about it because I don't think we can really understand what this name means until we begin to get to know the name. And, and um, maybe when we learned about Jesus in Sunday school, and, and, and that's such an important thing because we have a sense that that name means love. That, that name means it means something deep and, and profound. And so we, we have this relationship from an early age if we've been in Sunday school. And maybe we get older and we recognize that something is missing in our brand name, dollar sign, cheap salvation, uh, materialist culture. Maybe we're called to the name of Jesus because we witnessed something that transformed us. Whatever reason that we're called, we can consider ourselves, we can consider that we're being called by that name to trust in that name. And once we are called, we can begin to draw closer into relationship with Jesus. And the meaning of that name becomes revealed over time as we seek it out. Now, if we go back again to the Exodus story, 
you have Moses, and Moses is, is in the desert, and he comes upon the burning bush. And, and he has an encounter with God, this mysterious encounter with God in the desert. And, and Moses says, what is your name? And that's, that's again, it's pow- you have power over something or in something if you know the name. And Moses says, what is your name? And, and the voice from the burning bush says, I am that I am. God does not have a name that can be pronounced by us. I am means God is identified with being itself. I am is a, is a verb, to be. It's a mystery that's too great for us to comprehend. And when Jesus comes into the world, this mysterious word made flesh and dwells among us, we're able to encounter God in human form. But that poses another problem because most of the people we know, all the people we know are flawed. So for God to come as a, as a human being, what does that mean? We, our, our sense of humanity is, is that, you know, it's, it's imperfect in many ways. So who is this human that is also God, that is revealing God to us? Now, the Gospels paint a picture of Jesus, and, and Jesus' words, the things that he, Jesus says and the things that Jesus does, they're integrated. They're, everything is, it, he walks his walk, and he talks the talk, and they're both the same thing. That already is, is, is quite amazing in that story. He spoke about death and resurrection, and he demonstrated death and resurrection. He spoke about healing, and he demonstrated healing. He spoke about truth, and he showed what the truth is. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus makes seven I am statements. We talk about the one we're focusing on today is the one I am the good shepherd. But there's seven different statements. And what I, what I, I like to think of them is they're kind of like a prism. If something's too bright to look at, you, you have to look at it kind of shaded, like we did with the eclipse the other day. You had the dark glasses. It's too bright to look at. It blinds you. So you have to look at it differently. And these different I am statements in the Gospel of John are all kind of like different views from different angles. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. Jesus says, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says, I am the true vine. These are all aspects, and they're meant to identify with the great I am. Jesus says, I am. He's identifying with Moses. So I want to talk about the good shepherd for just a moment. And as as one aspect, and each one of these aspects are ways for us to get closer to understand what this name means and who God is. Now, the idea of God being like a shepherd is found in several places in the Old Testament. In the 23rd Psalm, which we read today, David talks about God as a good shepherd, as a shepherd. And the prophet Isaiah also describes the Lord as a shepherd. He says, God will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. And later on, the prophet Ezekiel uses that metaphor of true and false shepherds to speak about the leaders of Israel. Good shepherds lead us towards life, and those that are false lead us towards death. Now, shepherds were an integral part of societies in the old days. And I don't think we understand now, as folks would have then, it's not a common thing for us anymore. So we almost have to readjust our thinking what what it means to be a shepherd. It was, it was a very dangerous job. You had thieves and bandits that could kill you. You had lions, you had bears and wolves that could also kill you. You had dehydration that could kill you, snakes and scorpions, cliffs that you could fall off of. There was all kinds of things. You had to be quite brave and you had to be okay with being alone out on your own for a long time, alone as far as people are concerned. Um, so the qualities of a good shepherd included being watchful, being incredibly brave, and also willing to lay down their life. That's the defining characteristic of the good shepherd. Fully committed, willing to lay down their life. We can also understand the qualities of a good shepherd by looking at it sort of in the reverse, in the negative. What are a false shepherd's qualities? Ezekiel was condemning the leaders of Israel as though they were false shepherds. He told them, you false shepherds, you eat the fat, 
you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the crippled you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they, the people, have been scattered, and they have become food for wild beasts. That's pretty harsh. And I think, unfortunately, we can apply the same language to a lot of leaders today who selfishly put their own interests ahead of those of the people. Are your leaders willing to lay down their life for you? Well, that might be a stretch for leaders, but are they, willing, are they feeding you? Are they caring for you? Are they, are they looking after the least of these? Are they binding up the weak? Are they, are they watching out that people aren't scattered? We live in one of the most scattered, fractured times, I think, in, at least in my short life, that I can remember. But looking at history, a very fractured society right now. The leaders bringing us together, or are they scattering us more, leaving us to be sort of out there for the wild beasts? The one thing that Jesus repeats several times in the Gospel of John today is that the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Who among our leaders can we say that about? Those of us who are parents may be able to identify with the willing offering of our lives for our children, right? We want to live, we, we're, we would be willing to lay down our own lives for our children. We can understand that. And I think we can all imagine doing that for our siblings, for our dearest friends. Sometimes we, we read these amazing stories of, of, of strangers who push somebody out of the way of oncoming traffic or something and, and risk their own lives doing that. Laying down one's life for another. See, that's what Jesus did for all of us. And we are called to follow him. We're called to be like shepherds to one another, protecting and defending and laying down our lives if need be for one another. That's the message of the gospel. Jesus is our model for what it means to be a good shepherd. Jesus is also the model for who God is and who we are called to be. The saving power of Jesus' name is connected to the good shepherd's willingness to lay down his life for his sheep. We must always remember that it's not so much what you know, but who you know. The good news of the gospel invites us to get to know who Jesus, Jesus is, to know Jesus intimately. The name Jesus Christ of Nazareth is a name that opens doors. It opens doors into the realms of the spirit. It doesn't open social doors. It doesn't open those kind of things, but it opens our hearts to the life of the spirit. These doors lead us into an experience of God's truth, God's love, and the power of God's salvation. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we ask you to help us to get to know the Good Shepherd. Help us to understand what it means to lay down one's life for another, to live in the fullness of love and grace. Help us to follow you in truth and in spirit. Amen. All right, let's uh, join together in singing our closing hymn, number 381, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. <laughs>